have spent the better part of a week um, talking about the examples of hypocrisy and non-reality. And on Sunday we talked about proof in the pudding, world-changing proof and what's real. And, and the question is this. This is the question. Why is there so much disparity? I mean, I don't know about you, but as I continue to look through the Bible, you have all those that marched into God's reality and inherited God's promises, and you have all these people that fell by the wayside and were never able to attain the purpose of God for their life. We know that Lot was warning his family for them to escape, but they put the information... They put the information on the devil's balance and did not give it the necessary weight to escape. They were invited to participate. But when the information came, they said, no, this is not what he's saying. He's saying this over here. And they put it on a different scale. So they weren't able to come to truth. They weren't able to escape. They weren't able to live God's reality for their lives. And I, I want to say tonight that this is the crust, the, the root, the foundation of what our life is upon the earth. It is, it is intense warfare. Intense. Because I, I ask a question, why are we being deceived? Why can't the truth be said? Why can't the truth be heard? Why can't it be welcomed? Why does Lot's son-in-laws have to say, you're not... Just color it however you want that took them not to receive what was true, what was real, what was substantive. Their lifeline that was coming towards them was, was dodged. And so I want to say that the majority of mankind is living in that very stance. The lifeline is coming. Truth is coming. The blessing is coming. It's, it's been sent in God's compassion and goodness for mercy and deliverance. And there's, a, there's like, I'm not, I, don't, I don't credit it as such. I'm not going to consider it. And all the examples we've been sharing all week long tells us there's a serious matter of strategic battling that's raging for the heart's and the souls of every man. Some of us don't live life with that intensity. We, we might gauge things at a level of, well, that was just Lot because he had pizza last night. That was just Lot because he doesn't want us to get married to his daughters. That was just Lot because he's the old man we don't need to listen to. And the truth is that they were deceived and they perished in their deception. Thoughts that are in the hearts of men. We have the rich men in Revelations chapter 3 verse 17. We considered him. He says, I don't have any needs. I am sufficiently satisfied. You say I'm rich. I'm super wealthy. I don't need anything. And do not know the reality of your wretchedness. Of how miserable you are, your misery, how poor, how blind, how naked. He doesn't have a clue. And he's given instructions to move into God's provision in the next verse. My advice is that you would pursue something of greater value from me. Gold refined in the fire that you might be really rich. So that you might be really wealthy. And so this is an everyday battle. I, I, one of the things about being a preacher that's so hard is that every sermon is for me. Every sermon is for me. Because God continues to show me greater things. And I'm like, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Let me never be in that place, like I said last week, that God pulled me out of the gutter. And now I'm on the sidewalk. And I'm considered satisfied when he wants to pull me into the house and call me a son. Being on the sidewalk and not being muddy is not sufficient. There's a further pursuing of God's reality. But there's always the deception of falling short and thinking, I don't need to listen tonight. 
I'm, I'm already satisfied. I'm already wealthy. I'm already, I don't, and don't know, don't know reality. The Pharisees in Matthew 23, verse 13, were called hypocrites. They were the leaders of the spiritual culture of Jerusalem. If anybody knew God, it was them. When, when Paul is talking about them in the book of Romans, he says, look, it's true that you guys, and this is what he says, listen, uh, verse 17, Romans 2, 17, indeed you are chosen, and your confidence is on all the instructions you know, you know the law, and you make your boast in your relationship with God, and why is the boast made there? Because you know his will, verse, yeah, verse 18. You know his will, you know, you know you're chosen, you know his instruction, you're close to him. You're able to tell between the things that are approved and the things that are excellent. You know some things are good, but you know the, the, the real good things, the, the real, real, real. And so he's telling them, you're, you're being instructed out of the law, you, you guys have it. Verse 19, and you're confident that yourself, you're a leader to those who can't see. And so these very people that were at the top of their game, Jesus says, you're a hypocrite. You're, you're, you're deceived. You're not walking that reality. You're a light to those who are in darkness, but you don't know where you're going. In verse 20, he says, you're an instruction, instructor to the foolish. You're a teacher to babes. You have a form of knowledge. You have a form of truth in the law. Isn't it powerful that God... In Matthew 23, verse 13 says, you know something? There's a mask. You're, you're, uh, you're in Greek theater. Tax collector in Luke 18, 10, he comes and he says all the right words and he didn't connect with God. And the, the Pharisee says all the right words, but the tax collector is the one that connects. In Matthew 7, verse 21, they say on that day, Lord, Lord. Didn't we preach? Didn't we cast out demons in your name? Didn't we do wonders? And he says, depart from me. I don't know you. You're walking in deception. You're walking in lawlessness. Matthew 25, 31, the sheep and the goats. The, the, the whole thing we're seeing in the last couple of weeks is what is going on? There's, there's two realities. There's deception and there's truth. And so at the forefront of Satan's expertise started before the throne of God in Isaiah 14, 12, where he's confronted and, and that's where he takes a right turn or a left turn and he falls from heaven. How you have fallen, Lucifer, Satan, son of the morning, how you're cut down, you who used to be the strength to weaken the nations. Verse 13, you said in your heart, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attain to the heavens. I'll ascend. The, the, listen, it's better that God is speaking to your life than you declaring your own proclamation. Because that is the travesty of mankind. Who is directing your steps? What is the voice? And tonight, we're going to understand why it's warfare. Because a voice that is not God's voice will destroy you and lead you away from God's provision, from His purpose, from His peace. And this is the battle that rages in the hearts of all men. And the Bible, we, we read last week, that the whole world is following a voice that's not the voice of God. And it started before the throne of God, before man existed. When somebody rose up to say, I will, my will. I'm, I'm pursuing what I want. And that's always a sign of great destruction. This is what happened to all these men we've talked about. The sons of, the son-in-laws of Lot came and says, I understand what your voice says. But my voice speaks louder, and I think you're a joke. See? See, they drowned out the voice. In verse 13, he says, you said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. You're speaking your words. You're speaking your instructions. I will exalt my throne. My place is above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the assembly and the uttermost. I will ascend above the heights of clouds. I will make myself my own God, verse 14. 
I will ascend about above the clouds and I will be like God. I will be like God. And the truth of the matter is, while he was moving in that deception, verse 15 says, yet truth is, you're going to be brought super, super low to the lowest part of the pit. This is, this is where he leads. We talked about hypocrisy being the expression of pride because you want to be who you're not. You want to go where you haven't been told to go. And so pride filled in the heart leads to great deception. Humility and confession, we talked this week, pops the bubble, allows you to be who you are in all your weakness and debility. And there is no appearance. You are what you are. So in this regard, in this warfare, and, and I just hope that this is beneficial for you. This is why uh, I thought it was important as, as we have moved from last week, world-changing reality, to Sunday, world-changing proof, which I, I just got, just really started just a little bit. But we're going to go on Sunday again, God, God allowing to understand the real proof of what a true Christian is. But this is, for those of you who came tonight, what is, what is the underlying battle between reality and lies and proofs and falsities? 2 Corinthians 2.11. The reason we walk in this instruction is to avoid lest Satan should take advantage of us. How many know that, that he wants an advantage? He wants to derail you. He wants to debunk you. Unless he take advantage and, and of us, for we are not ignorant. We're not to be ignorant of his schemes, of his tricks, of his traps, of his snares. The Bible says, in the last days, many will fall away because of deception. This is, this is a spirit of what's, what's in the atmosphere in our, in, in our days. We'll read that in a second. But I, I just want you to understand that this is, this is we're, we're, we're walking led by the Spirit of God to tap in to reality of the battle that rages for the hearts and the souls that are trying to follow God. If the devil has you thinking like he wants you to think, you are gone. If, you're, if your thoughts run like he wants your thoughts to run, you have no chance. From the beginning of creation, his desire, which is called lust, is a disordered affection. Listen to what I'm saying tonight. That the warfare, he has been able to bring his sentiments and his thoughts deep within our thoughts and sentiments so that we rationalize like he wants us to rationalize. And he hits us right there, an uppercut at our sentiments because that's where we're most moved. You're not going to be hurt in your intellect. You're going to get hurt in what you feel. And so people will always say, well, I feel well, I, you know, my thoughts are deep in this regard, so that's why I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And at one time, in Matthew 16, 23, Jesus has to turn around to Peter and say, Get behind me, Satan. You're not going to lead my footsteps. You're not going to order my thoughts. I'm not going to follow you in your reasoning. For you are a stumbling block. And you are not thinking like God wants to think. See, he wants to take the lead thinking like he wants. And God wants you to listen to God. And to have your conscience purged from any hypocrisy and double-mindedness. Double you're not mindful of the things of God. You're, you're wanting me to think like men think. And so if you understand the, the strategy and the warfare is everything was set up. In Matthew 16, 21, before he rebukes Peter, saying, get behind me, Satan, Jesus began to show his disciples that he, might, he must go to Jerusalem and suffer things 
at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes. It was necessary to be killed and to be raised on the third day. And the, de the devil got into Peter and says, Lord, may this never happen to you. Well, it just happened to be the will of God. And if you get sucked into the sentiment, you say, yeah, yeah. Verse 22, then Peter took him aside, rebuked him, saying, For, far be it from you, Lord, that this should ever occur to you. Look at, look at the whole thing. This is what God wants me to do. And then a voice comes, may it never happen. And distinguishing reality from falsity, genuineness from hypocrisy, he says, get behind me, devil. I can't follow you. I can't think like you. You're going to destroy me if I listen to you. You're going to destroy my family. You're going to destroy my ministry. You're going to cause me to waver. And we know what happened when Judas allowed Satan to come into his heart. He was, he was off keel 100%. He was, he was totally gone. He was depressed. His political machinery wasn't working. He wanted Jesus to be the next emperor and Caesar. And he saw Jesus in the light of being the king and the Jewish government. And, and reign. that wasn't the will of God. So he took Satan's lead. And every time Satan is leading you, my friend, you are destined for destruction. This is what happened in the garden. Happened up in, in heaven. We saw that, right? The throne. Because I'm, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to lead God even. And then in the garden, we have them. Did God say that? No, listen to what I have to say. If you go this way, you're going to be greater than God. See, the lead. The lead, the voice that's leading. I ask you tonight, what is the voice that's leading you? What is the voice that leads? In the occasion with Jesus, he had all the sentiment to say, you know something? You are right. Because in fact, verse 22 says, Peter got really serious to rebuke Jesus and say, let God forbid this, Lord. This shall never happen to you. And, and okay, in the realm of deep, seated sentiment and you guys know where they're at right where, where is it that we hear deep-seated voices the most in our deep soul sentiment when we're hungry when we're hungry and let me let me speak it another way for people that are lonely in relationship and are starving that's when Satan's voice says don't listen to God don't wait on God why listen to God God doesn't want us to you see, so all the deep sentiment of the hearts of men begin to cry out things that are totally demonic. They're full of disgusting, you know, slithering. It, it didn't sound, sound like that. When Eve is sitting there seeing the apple, or, I'm sorry, the fruit. I'm going to take offense to that. They see the fruit, and all of a sudden, sorry, he said, it was good to the eyes. It was good to make one. It, it was good. And then a voice comes and says, it's yours, take it. With the only difference that God had led before to say, do not eat from that tree. So the disparity starts from there. It started in heaven with Satan. It's in here with Eve going that route. It's in every aspect of our life. Every aspect has this situation. We saw it with, with all these examples of, of different people taking different routes. Satan attacked men by being at the forefront. The devil continually wants to lead our thoughts and instruct us in the steps we're to take. He's leading us because of the strong emotional sentiments and ties in our soul. And his desire is to take us captive. You don't believe me. Here, Paul tells Timothy that the devil's desire is to take us captive and we could read that let me let me find that you know that he he has no he has no desire for your escape and your prosperity and your fruitfulness he he desires to tie you up and throw you in the pit and not let you out second timothy 226 our desire tonight 
is to be able to bring awareness to why we fall into hypocrisy, why we fall into, into lies, into deception, why we end up not seeing God in our lives. Because, verse 25, let's start with verse 25. Correct with humility those who are walking opposite because perhaps God will grant them a U-turn so that they could come to the truth. Hey, they're, they're walking, being instructed by a voice that's not God's voice, by a sentiment that's stronger than their desire to turn. And he says, try to, try to get them to U-turn in humility uh, because maybe God permits them to repent and go in the, in, in, not falsity, not, not lies, not deception, but the truth. And then it says, verse 26, that they might come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil because he's taking them captive to fulfill his desire, his will. Anybody who walks in that mindset ends up seeing the fruit of the devil. And I, I have people call me all day long and they're like, you know, this fruit is rotten and it's disgusting and, and I don't want it. Well, you can't continue to live listening to a voice that's not Jesus Christ. You cannot continue to live allowing your thoughts to govern your sentiments. And, and this is where the warfare lies. It's a battle. And some of us are just simply overwhelmed by the huge amount of activity up here in the brain that's not connected to the Spirit of God. And this is where Paul has to write a letter to the Galatians in Galatians 3 verse 1 where he says, Who the heck put a curse upon you? And he said it like that, you, you foolish Galatians, who bewitched you that you should not obey truth? How did that happen? How did you get into believing a lie and embracing it and saying, you know, I'm going to... And I had one gentleman one time, I said, listen, you're on the Titanic and it's sinking. He goes, well, if it's sinking, I'm just going to hug the pole and go down with the ship. I said, I'm not. I'm going to put a life vest on. I'm going to say, SOS, let me get out of here. I don't want to continue to lose as the devil is trying to sink our ship. And so the reality is, years later, they were talking about starting a scuba club because everything came down because they weren't talking. They were, they were underwater already. They were high and mighty. And all of a sudden, they're saying, well, when you're doing scuba diving, you don't leave your, there's a buddy system. Because... When truth came, they didn't have an appetite. They didn't have ear. They didn't love truth. They were taken captive. And so here it is in Matthew 4, verse 1. The Bible says that, verse 2, Matthew 4, verse 2, that these powerful sentiments that attack us and the, in the, rooted in the sentiments of our lives, and they're, they're various in, in reality and in, in various forms it says he went without food for 40 days and 40 nights and here verse 3 the tempter comes and says if you are the son of God command these stones to be made bread uh, you know there, there are all sorts of situations we, we're not going to go into every single one of this scenario but just just you're starving for the provision that you deeply and honestly need better be careful the voice you listen to better be careful that satan does not lead your steps for he tried and we thank god for jesus christ he said like this jesus verse four but he replied no it's written man shall not live by bread alone he shall be upheld and sustained by every word that comes from the mouth of god I'm not even in the, the moment of my deep sentiment desire. I'm starving, 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 starving. But I'm listening to God. I'm listening to the Lord. I, I want to put up my radars to see what God is saying. And so that was one. In verse 5, the devil takes him to a very high pinnacle and shows him an intense holy city with with on top of a mountain, verse 6, and he says, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. 
But he'll take charge over you with his angels, lest they will bear you up with their hands, lest you strike with your foot. This, this is all the, the tempting, the challenging, the, the moving, you know, and again, the voice of Satan. You have nothing to prove, my friend. You are beloved earnestly, deeply. You have nothing to move or to, to prove. You just wait upon the goodness of God. And don't be moved. And, and so, so I don't know what the expression, first, the first one is food. And I know that some of us probably would sell our moms for food, or the satiation of the quenching of our deep desire. But then this is power. I'm going to prove. You don't know the immensity of the men who says, I'll show them. Where, we, where have we seen these men? You guys tell me. In the depth and the craters where, where Satan falls. Where Satan falls. I'll show them. Jesus said to him, and this is our response, verse 7, on the other hand, it's written, you shall not tempt. There's nothing to test. There's nothing to prove. I'm not going to walk in that heart. It's not the heart of God. God, this is what I've said. And, and people all the time is like, hey, assert your, they tell me, assert your whatever. Guess what? I'm sufficient to know that God asserts. And I rest. Assert nothing. God have mercy that I not become like one of them and be lost. I've seen too many, too many things in this life to assert anything. I want to see Jesus assert. The last one in this particular battle in verse 8, the devil takes him to a high mountain and shows him the kingdom and the glory and the splendor of the earth. Be careful, my friend, what the devil shows you. You can say amen. amen. Be careful letting him be your tour guide. Be careful... When you're partnering with thoughts that are distant and far from the reality of God. And said to him, these things I'll give you if you bow down and worship. So this is another attack that the deep-seated aspect of the soul of men and our desire to worship. This is deep, deep. That's when we're moved by Satan in these realms. And this is why the whole world is lodged in the deception. And I love Jesus Christ's response in verse 10. He says, devil, get out of my life. Get out of my life. I don't need to hear your voice anymore. I don't need to hear your suggestions. I don't, see, can we tonight understand that every hypocritical move is a desire to front something because there's something behind. And tell the devil, I don't need nothing to be in front of me. A hypocrite under deciphering. You, you can't tell what's really under underlying. Uh, our heart's desire from day one in this church, it's part of our vision, that nothing be an undercurrent. That everything be on the surface. And this is why it's so transparent. Um, God, I was walking around today and I get to my office and Ariel's sitting in my office. Unheard of. The kids run in and out of our homes. They check every drawer. They check all our music. They, they, they just, we have, we have desired the transparency of no covering. Everything above. We've sat and we've discussed every matter. One and fifty hundred times. If everything stays transparent and real and above board, then there's no need for Satan to come and creep in and sink his teeth and liar and lay and all this stuff. As this is our vision. That's where the spring comes from in spring of life. That there not be underlying currents. That everything we, we've discussed, open. Listen, as a pastoral family, we, we have sat and discussed things that, that we... In the natural, to say, guess what, buddy? It's none of your business. What are you asking that for? It has nothing to do. Who tells you what to do at the, where, where you work? But we haven't taken that attitude. Because where light is, darkness doesn't prevail. Amen. Where the presence of God is, there is no looming demons destroying people's lives. That's the number one destruction in the life of a marriage when they stop talking to each other real things. 
And it's a destruction of the church also. But it's this humility at confession, constantly distinguishing the truth from the lie. 2 Corinthians 10.3, this is what Paul told the Corinthian church, that even though we are human and we walk like humans walk, we, 10, 2 Corinthians 10.3, even if even that we're in the flesh, we're in this suit, we do not war according to the flesh. We don't get savvy on the carnal side. Well, then what, how do you warfare this thing if you don't use the customary weapons of the flesh? Verse 4, he says, the weapons of our warfare are not physical, but they are mighty before God to overthrow the destruction of strongholds. Inasmuch, verse 5, that we cast down every, every instruction, thought, voice of Satan is up above God's. We need to grab it here and take it captive. Every Casting down every argument, every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. Bring it down. And it says, bring in every thought to captivity and say, listen, we're going to listen to God. Thanks for the advice. Thanks for the sentiment. Thanks for what you're doing. I'm not going there. I'm not going there. I refuse to go there. In fact, verse 6 says, being ready to punish everything that is disordinate as we submit in obedience. And the Amplified says, where we are fully secured and complete. Why is Paul... Telling the Corinthians that this is our warfare. That there is the tendency to lie. There's a tendency to move. There's a tendency to satisfy our needs. And this, is, this is what happened to Ananias and Sapphira. What was their necessity? To come and say, well, that's all. You know, that's all. We sold it. That's the property we sold. There's nothing more. And in that deception, they died. 2 Corinthians 11.3, this is why Paul says it. He says, I fear that somehow the devil is going to deceive you through his craftiness and your mind's going to go into warp, speed, twisted, perverted. The word wicked means twisted. The word perverted means twisted. That your mind would be corrupted from simplicity that's in Christ. Somehow the devil's going to do to you what he did to Eve. I, I'm concerned lest somehow he's trying to wiggle some space. The serpent deceived. As the serpent deceived Eve, he also uses his craftiness to deceive you. To the Galatians where Paul in chapter 3 verse 1 says, Who has bewitched you that you should prefer some sentiment other than the Spirit of God? That you should not obey truth, that you not be grounded in reality. And so in chapter 6, verse 7, he says, be not deceived. God is not going to be made fun. Whatever a man sows, he shall reap. Don't walk in deception. God's not going to be made fun of us. Verse 8, everything will will bear its harvest, for he who sows to his flesh will reap from the flesh twistedness, corruption, rot. But he who sows in the spirit will uh, reap spirit, everlasting life. Verse 9, do not be tired of doing that which you do well, because in due season you're going to get a harvest. You will reap if you do not lose heart. So the question is tonight, what is deception based upon? And the answer is errors, faults, lies, untrue assumptions. All that brings deception into our lives. So how do you counter a lie? How do you, how do you just trump the devil with truth? Let's sit down at the table and talk truth. Let's sit down at the table and clear the air. Let's sit down and let's speak from our hearts. 
How has that happened? Isaiah 1.18, come now let us reason together. Regardless of what the issue is in a marriage, in a family, in a relationship, in a ministry, in, in our life, let's sit at the table and let us reason together. Because even if things are dark and deep and twisted, they're going to be made white as snow. Though they are red and messed up and stained, irremovable, they're going to be white as wool. See, truth always sets you free. John chapter 8, verse 32. You shall know the truth, and Satan won't be able to grab a hold of you. Satan won't have, be able to tip your, your steering wheel. John 8, 32. Let's go there. Now, God, you know something? And this is what... This is what Richard Lopez was saying. He says, God, all these messages on hypocrisy, on deception, on lies, uh, what does it mean to be a hypocrite? And the Lord says, be who you are at all times in all places before all people. That whatever you are, you are what you are. And that is being true. (laughs) That gives you an opportunity to hear what you need to hear. How are you doing? Fine. Well, somebody who's doing fine doesn't need to hear anything. Stop meditating on deception. The devil's feeding you. Stop meditating and start meditating on God's word. You will begin to tear down strongholds. And your mind is renewed in the word of God. Your feelings will reflect those changes. Everyone who's walking in a double life, there is a lie in operation lodged in the central part of his heart, making him walk contrary to the heart of God. John 13, 27. Jesus looks at Judas and says, my friend... Go and fulfill. After the piece of bread, Satan entered into him. And Jesus says, what you are feeling to have to do, do it quickly. Jesus was inviting him, be real, man. Be real. Since Satan is already leading your steps, walk in the direction of your strong sentiment. Acts chapter 5, verse 3. Peter says to Ananias, how is it that Satan has filled your heart? That you would appear in your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and reserve for yourself what is not true, what is not real, what is not transparent. Acts chapter 8, verse 18, Simon sees there's power in the hands laid by the apostles And he says, I will interchange, I will purchase, saying, grant me this power and authority so that I can minister the Holy Spirit like you do, guys. And Peter says, let all your attempts to become what you're not destroy and overtake you because you thought in your imaginations you could obtain what God gives freely with money. Verse 21, you have neither part nor nor Uh, inheritance in this manner for your heart is wrong in God's sight it is not straightforward it's not right it's not true verse 22 so repent take a u-turn from this depravity and wickedness of yours and pray that the Lord would give you a heart of purpose and disregard what you've done in forgiveness for I see that you're walking deep in the sentiment of bitterness And you're forged, you're you're captive by your iniquity, by your desire. That's not God's desire. And Simon, verse 24, says, Pray that nothing what you have said will be my reality. Pray that I can escape from the devil's trap. 2 Timothy 2.25, he says, Therefore, correct those that are contrary to, in gentleness, hoping that God might grab, uh, grant them a U-turn and come to truth so that they might perceive and recognize accurately and be acquainted with reality and accept it. Verse 25, let's go back to verse 25. That's the amplified version I'm reading. That they might know truth. Listen, tonight the Lord is saying every area of our life needs to be ushered in the direction of His voice. As we hear it, if you don't hear the voice of God, plead. Ask God to have mercy upon you that you might hear it. God is speaking tonight in such a wonderful way, such a marvelous way. In humility, 
correcting those who are in opposition. That God might grant them to be acquainted with truth and escape. How? Verse 26, by coming back to reality. It says, verse 26, that they might come to their senses. This is the, the prodigal son had to come to reality because what he was walking in was, was total deception. And as they come back to reality, they are able to escape the trap of the devil because they have been taken captive to do his will. And this is what God is doing in, in the world. This is what we're called to do as the church. And it's very difficult for people to get to the table to want to talk about reality. Everybody's always fluffing it and stuffing it and, and disguising it and, and wearing it and, and all that stuff to just cover, you know, uh, something that is not healthy. Acts 26, 16 are calling to open the eyes, open the eyes from those that are Rise and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to make you a minister, a servant, and a witness both of the things which you have seen and the things that will be revealed to you. Verse 17, I will deliver you from the Jewish people and as well as from the Gentiles to whom I now send you. Verse 18, to open, open the eyes in order that they might turn from darkness to light. Uh, walk in the deception of darkness is the power of Satan. To light is the power of God. So that they might receive forgiveness of their sins and they might receive their inheritance amongst those that are being washed, sanctified by faith in me. The more we hang out with Christ, the more genuine our experience. And there is nothing more devastating to man than not to be walking in truth walking in in that relaxed atmosphere of I am what I am by the grace of God this is the work that God is doing in me let's uh, stand tonight and ask the music team to come one of the things we've asked here in this church for many years is those that minister on this altar would be genuine uh, that they would be transparent that they they you know that not that they'd be perfect not that they'd be perfect, but that they'd be real. And, and I, I believe that God has given us that gift of giving us real ministers in this church. Real, real, genuine men of God, women of God, marriages, families. It would be a devastation if we had to sit there, okay, Joey and Suleika, act like you're happy. That would be a devastation. They enjoy their marriage. They enjoy their family. Uh, if you hang out with us, you'll see it. You'll perceive it. And in the good times, the bad times, in the, when, all the time, we, we're, just, we're just in the mercy of God. We love truth. We love reality. And, and we try, try, try to kill those things in our lives that are not consistent. I, I believe that's why this is a healthy place for our kids a healthy place and so there is no the kids are in the room don't speak and God's grace is sufficient to carry us and to, to lead us and, and this my friends is the, is the battle that w rages and, and you don't even have to go too far I wanted to say tonight that the very th the 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 very fact that there's a thought in your brain that's contrary to the thought of God doesn't make you ungodly, my friend. The devil is planting seeds. Don't, don't, don't grasp his stuff and call it yours. You understand? He's going he's gonna to tell you everything you'll receive and listen to is going to go through this noggin here. But that doesn't make you who you are. You can reject that thing. You could say, get thee behind me, Satan. You're trying to mess with me, and I'm not to be messed with. I'm connected. I, I'm, I'm listening to God. Amen. Amen. Amen? For years, the devil will give you a nickname. If you allow him to give it to you, he'll tell you you're, you're the most whatever. He'll, he'll describe it for you if, you if you listen to him. And then you need to say, 
get thee behind me. Be gone. Get out of my life. I'm not, I'm not, there's no, I'm not uh, tuned. You know, you tune a radio to hear the station. I'm not tuned to that, to that stuff. I want to hear God's voice. I want to hear God's truth. I want to, I want to sit around godly men, bear my heart. It's been a, a, a blessing. First John chapter 1, verse 7, I believe. It says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we're connected. We're, we have, we're connected. If, if, we, if that's the challenge, that is the way out. And the blood of Jesus forgives us and cleanses us from all our sins. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, then there's a connection. There is no connection if we refuse to walk in transparency. If we're, we're walking like we've been talking these days. Father, we give you thanks tonight for your mercy and your grace.